Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, had a impromptu training thing. I had a doctor ask me a couple days ago uh, to make uh, an L and U splint, L and U splint, um, for a patient. And I hadn't heard that term in a really, really long time. And so I thought, let's go ahead and do a video for some of you guys that are out there working for some surgeons or MDs that are using some slang terms. Uh, what it is, it's a posterior uh, short leg splint with a stirrup. So it's it's basically three quarters of a cast. Um, we're going to go ahead and do that. So posterior short leg with a stirrup. I'll show you some tricks along the way. And uh, I went through the videos just to make sure, and we hadn't done this one yet. So I thought when this doctor asked for an L and U, I thought, hey, you know what? That would be a good one since we haven't been asked for that yet. So we'll go ahead and get started on that using these materials. Uh, basic uh, cast pad, or in this case, splint padding, uh, cotton web roll kind of stuff, ace wraps. We're going to go ahead and be using the uh, the three inch ortho glass. And uh, we can do this with plaster too if, if we want to get all down and dirty and messy. Some scissors, of course, and we'll be using uh, one of the staff members uh, with their permission uh, as far as the leg and, and using that for our example. So we'll go ahead and get started. Now, usually, uh, some of the urgent cares and the, um, the ERs and some of the standalone clinics will not do a stocking net with their splints. And that's totally acceptable. We have stocking net here, so we're going to use it. If you have stocking net, um, I tend to lean more towards using it. It's more comfort for the patient. It's not as itchy with the cotton on there for a few days. And um, also, too, when you use the stocking net, there's a couple of tricks you can do when you're splinting and you can use the ends of the stocking net for that trick and I'll show you those as we go along. So we're gonna go ahead and start doing the padding. Unlike the cast, unlike the cast, um, you're gonna do a little bit more padding than you would do inside the cast because of course this is a splint, it's not a cast. So I tend to put, if the cast requires uh, one to two to three rolls, I tend to go two to three to four rolls here, especially around the area, the injury area, the side area, because they're gonna be wearing the splint for a few days before they make it to ortho or wherever they're gonna go. We want that swelling to calm down. And that's another reason why the doctor, in this particular case, ordered the L and U, the, the posterior leg with the stirrups, because the doctor felt there was too much swelling going on uh, too soon to put a cast. So we put them in a, in a, a posterior leg with stirrups for three to four days have them come back, take all that business off, and then put a cast on once the swelling goes down. So you guys have seen me do all the padding before. We'll kind of time lapse through the padding, but just know that when I'm doing these areas here, especially around the injury, I'll be doing a little bit extra padding. Skip through some of this. So I asked the young lady to pause it for a minute so you guys wouldn't get bored with me doing all the wrapping, which you guys have seen like the last 10, 20 videos. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to measure, we're going to measure uh, for the posterior splint and for the stirrup. Now, if you don't have a handy dandy measuring tape, which we tend to keep in our drawers, you can measure out like so and measure out like so. You can do this and then, and then of course measure it out with the uh, the ortho glass but if you don't have one of these handy a nice little trick is you get a strip of tape or a strip of cotton and you just measure with the cotton pretty simple and like it, say, it saves you from having to leave the room so there's your how much ortho glass you're going to need for the posterior portion of the splint and then you do the same thing for the stirrup get yourself a piece of cotton because cotton's relatively inexpensive and there's your strip you're going to need for the actual stirrup portion of the uh, splint. The, it's, it's basically two splints. This splint is called an L and U, just like you would like the sounds L and, and U. Um, and it's also called a, a posterior uh, splint with a stirrup. And also, too, I've actually seen it in a book. 
I've seen it in a book called A Cadillac Splint. Uh, there is a reason for that, and I'll, I'll, I'll demo that at the very, very end of this whole process. There is one little thing you do, and, it, and then for whatever reason, that particular company called it a Cadillac Splint. Um, but what it does basically is it protects the posterior portion, wherever the injury is, as well as if it's an unstable fracture, like a distal tib fib, or maybe a not so mid shaft tib fib, it'll protect the stability of the long bones. So here's your strip you're gonna use, which we haven't taken out of the foil yet. Here's your posterior leg. And then we'll, take, we'll cut the portion we need for the stirrup. Here's our measurement. I'll do it here where you can see. So right here. So we take those two portions. I'm using the, the Fiskars to cut through the material so I don't, I don't ruin my bandage scissors and get them too gunked up too quickly. Now, this will be your stirrup. So as we all know, anybody who's ever worked with orthoglass, you know that you, you wet it a very, very minimal amount of water. You do not need a bucket full of water. Um, you see me pulling out the end piece here so that the little shards don't make contact with the skin. You can either extend that out or you can open the sleeve just a little. I'll come in close and you can trim away. You can trim away the excess so it doesn't make contact with the skin. And I like to cut away the corners also just because I work with kids. So. And you can do this for patient comfort. Then you pull it back over and just like so. That's one portion of your splint there. You lay it on there just to confirm your measurement, which we're good to go. Okay, and then we still have time because we haven't wet it yet. Let's go ahead and confirm our posterior portion. So I went about a fraction long on that. So you can either A, fold it over if it's a minimal amount, or B, you can just trim it. I like to trim it. I'm, I just, uh, I'm not a big fan of folding it over. I know that some people, if you're in a hurry or if you're getting ready to transport the patient, um, you just, you do that because you, you're, you got to get them on the air life or you got to get them in the ambulance box or whatever you got to do. And I, I don't, no disrespect to people that fold it over a little bit. I, that's fine. I just, I have the luxury of, of having time on my hands so I can go back and, and re-trim or re-measure. So now we have our posterior portion of the splint, just like so. Now, that being said, we're gonna talk about all this in just a sec. So when you wet it, when you wet it, I'll have, I'll have the young lady holding the camera turn this direction. When you wet it, all right, so uh, forgive the little, the little mishap there. We had a little technical difficulty there, uh, switching from the selfie lens to the, the forward lens. Anyway, when you do the, uh, when, you, when you're wetting the orthoglass, I gotta be honest with you guys, you really need a very, very minimal amount of water, very minimal. Remember that whatever water you wet, you have to wring that water out. So I tend to only wet one side, just a little really. I mean, just a little. Lots of ways to wring it out. You can roll it up in a towel. You can roll it up in a towel and wring out the extra water. You can lay it on the, I like to lay it on the, I'm not gonna, you don't have to do this. I'll just, I'll just do it real quick and I'll show them. Lay it on the bed sheet, the paper sheet, and just wring out the excess water. And the reason I only wet one side is because I put the dry side up against the cotton. I put the dry side up against the cotton because I really don't care if the ace wraps get wet. Now, this is probably one of the most important things you're going to take out of this. When you're doing a two-part splint, do not, please, 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 do not, do, do not wrap the posterior portion of the splint with an ace wrap and then place the stirrup on, and then wrap it with a second roll of ace wraps. It, it creates a compromise of circulation, especially if you put the ace wraps on too tight, or you can put the ace wraps on completely, completely normal as a provider, and then because of, because of the patient, or the swelling, or the injury, or non-compliance, or whatever it is, what could end up happening, because you have two full layers of ace wraps, uh, isolating each splint, you could it, it could create a, a pretty significant circulation issue, which will come back on you. So what I tend to do when I put the first portion of the splint on, 
If you're worried about it moving while you're getting the stirrup ready, take your cotton and just do this. One little strip to hold it in place, just one little strip. Again, one little strip down here by the calf muscle to hold it in place. If you're worried about it, if the patient's compliant, like, like of course my, my coworker here is, is you know, laying perfectly still and not in any kind of discomfort, uh, then you don't have to worry about this. But if the patient's mobile, they're upset, they're, they're cringing or they're moving or they're wiggling or whatever, if you do a couple strips of cotton throughout, it will hold the splint, the posterior portion of the splint in place without, without, creating, without creating any circulation issues. You can see here, it's secure here and it's secure here and we haven't made anything tight and we haven't compromised the circulation at all. Cool. All right, so then we'll do the same thing. We'll wet this with a little bead of water I'll wring it out here on the table or on a, on a towel or whatever we're going to do. I'll wring it all out and then we'll lay it on top and we'll make sure the size is right. And then what we'll do, we can secure this. Now, while we walk away to go get our ace wraps, if you happen to be working alone, what you can do, this is where the stockinette comes in handy. Watch this. You take your stockinette, fold it over the end pieces. And what you've done, if I may, what you've done is you've started to secure the stirrup and the posterior leg without even having to hold it. You're letting, you're letting the materials do the work for you. You can see there. And then you do the same thing with the toe. You fold this over and it'll hold the toe piece. It'll hold that toe piece in place. There you go. Thank you, man. So we'll go ahead and do that here at the toe as well. And this is one of the benefits to using the stockinette, especially if you're working alone. What it does, the stockinette acts as your extra set of hands. And of course, the little strips of cotton that you just wrapped help hold things in place too. And so then all you do from here, and what you have basically, is you, know, you now have three quarters of a cast. You have the lateral, the posterior, and the medial all protected, and you have the, the anterior portion here, um, or I guess I guess you'd call it the dorsal surface on the foot, but you have that exposed to, to allow for swelling. And then all you do, it's really, really simple, you just create this nice box shape, and you start securing with the ace wraps. Now, the thing we talked about a little while back, a few minutes ago, about the Cadillac name for this, there is, a, there is a teaching out there where you take, you take a pen or a marker and you mark the corners here. You mark the, the corners of the stirrup and what you do, I don't want to totally, totally mess up my splint. Let me take this for a second and I want to show you. What you do is you, where you mark the corners here, you open up the sleeve and you cut away the fiberglass that's inside. You cut away that fiberglass and, you, and so this isn't doubled up. Right here, it's not doubled up with two layers of fiberglass. And that, therefore, you only have one layer of fiberglass. And that, you know, that, that's a nice creature comfort. It's not mandatory at all. But some people actually do that when they have the time and the luxury to do that. And I see that more uh, in post-op kind of stuff. I don't see it like in pre-hospital care, emergency room care, uh, but like post-op kind of stuff. I'll see like when people like me, like we have the time to like get real nice and fancy and all that stuff. I'll see, I'll see people cut away that inside bottom portion of the fiberglass. And so that all you have is you have the bottom portion of the posterior and this is just uh, the sleeve, but you still have the stirrup effect. And then you just take the ace wraps. I'll get right now. Like I said, you only want to do, you only want to do one full set of ace wraps. So, Please, please, again, if you take anything away from this video, there's a couple little tricks, but please do not put the posterior, wrap a bunch of ace wraps, and then put the stirrup and put more ace wraps. You really run the risk um, of, the, of you having a circulation issue distal to the ace wraps. So um, this is pretty easy. I'll just ace wrap it and we'll be done. And then I'll show you the finished product. I'm falling down like crazy, but I'll go pick them up in a minute. And again, as we all know, the ace wraps never, never have to be, they, they don't have to be tight. They're just there to hold the splint in place. 
So there's really no reason at all for them to be tight. And I'll stop here while I get the uh, ones that fell on the ground. Here comes the last portion. I'll have the patient, the pseudo patient, I'll have her sit up in a second and we can, we can talk about the finished product. So as you can see, uh, you now have a, uh, a splint on that has the stirrups and the posterior portion, which I'll tap on since you can't see it. Um, and then of course, the entire front surface of the splint is completely just the padding to allow for that swelling to happen in case the swelling happens. And this is a posterior, may I? Thank you, ma'am. This is, I'll come over here to the side where you can see it. This is a posterior uh, short leg splint with the stirrup as well. So again, uh, it's called that. It's called an LNU. And some people will even call it, like I said, if you cut away the the extra the extra orthoglass down here, if you cut it away so there's only one layer of orthoglass, uh, some people call it a Cadillac splint. Thanks for watching.